This is Dr. Carroll, and this video is about an introduction to inheritance. So let's start with the background. So a major objective of object-oriented programming, or OOP, is to is code reuse. We've seen this in other videos. Functions, for example, really illustrate uh, code reuse. We have classes, which can be instantiated multiple times. That uh, facilitates code reuse. And in the future, we'll learn about generic classes like ArrayList and LinkedList. And so that brings us to today of inheritance. We're, we're going to reuse a class to build another class. Let's start with an example to motivate this. So let's assume that you have a student class that you've already written, but you're being told that the project specifications have changed and now the customer wants a collection of students. Great, we already got that. But they also want faculty and staff and administrators and volunteers and donors and alumni and contractors and probably some others too that they haven't figured out or mentioned yet. So we need a class for each of these. So let's go through and stipulate what each of these classes are going to need. So and let's just do three to kind of paint the picture rather than do them all. And so a student has a first name, has a last name, and an ID, and an email address. And you're noticing that faculty also have names, IDs, and email address. And guess what? So do administrators. But students have the year in school that they are, their major, whereas faculty have what department they, they belong to, are they tenured or not, and then administrators also have a title just for simplicity here. Okay, so, so let's see what this looks like for what we already have. So we have this student class, and so we have its fields here, and I, I have very little documentation here so that we can just focus on inheritance and, and that issue, and so it also so it'll fit on one screen. Um, we have a constructor that takes no arguments, and just has all the defaults. We have uh, a, a student constructor that has all the parameters that are specified here. And we have our getters and setters with the only thing really interesting is that set year validates that it's a valid year. It's the first, second, or the first, second, third, or fourth year. And if not, then we have an error suggesting freshman, sophomore, junior, senior as a classification. Sometimes that senior year is a little bit longer than a year. Um, and so this is what we have. And you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, okay, we've already got this. How many precious keystrokes is this going to cost me to, to do all this? Don't worry, inheritance is here to save the day. And it's going to allow us to leverage existing code and also allows us to intelligently deal with the complexity. In, and what we mean by inheritance here is hierarchical inheritance, where a subcategory has the attributes of the supercategory. Okay, so let's talk about some definitions to lay the groundwork here. So inheritance, base class, and derived class. So the definition of inheritance is we have a class that derives properties from a previously defined class. And so let's talk about what those classes are. A base class is a class from which another class is derived. Okay, so we have our base class. And so we also call this the parent class or super class. Okay, because um, it will be derived from, uh, other classes will inherit from the base class. We have the derived class then, which inherits the members of the base class. And we call this either the child or a subclass. And if we're going to use parent, we use child. If we're going to use sub, we're going to use super, just so that they, they line up well. And so one of the purposes of inheritance is it provides a method for coping with the complexity of a problem by allowing us to use existing code. So let's, let's go back to that um, challenge that we had about administrators, faculty, 
and students and see how to tackle each of that. And so we, we've already recognized that the names and IDs and emails are going to be common among all of these, or let's just assume that that's the case. And so that's what's common. And so what we do is we're going to establish what is common and pull that into the base class, okay? Because other classes will derive from it. Okay, so let's let's take our student class here and let's save a copy and let's name it person. Because each of these uh, different classes, students, faculty, administrators, donors, alumni, contracts, they're all people and they're, they're university people, or at least associated with the university, but we'll, we'll just call it person for, for simplicity. So we named it person, which means we need to change uh, the name of the class and we're going to do a replace all because the the constructor also changes okay but uh, so we can get rid of year and major because we we don't have not every person has a year and a major so we'll just delete that here year and major year and major and, and there we go. Now we have a person class. This is our base class. Okay, so let's just put that here, base class. Now you're thinking, okay, how does that help me? Now let's go back to the student class here. And now, what can we do? Be if we give it extends person, so extends, as you notice, is a keyword, person being the name of the class, the, the base class that we're extending. What we do is we inherit the name, the surname, the ID, the email. So we don't have to include those here. And so um, we don't have to specify them as fields, uh, to, to, but we get access to them. So that means this code is still valid. When we call a constructor for a student, and we pass it in a name, notice we can still use the given name field that exists in student, in person, sorry. Let me flip back. So person has the given name, surname, ID, and email address. Flipping back to student, we don't have those listed here, but we have access to them because we inherit them. So furthermore, we didn't have to write these get name, get ID, get email. And so we don't have to write, we don't have to include those here. We inherit them. Oh. And major, which are specific to student. Okay, so now let's try and compile this. So Java C student.java. And it's yelling at us, because it says a uh, given name has private access in the base class person and it, it yells at us for that so remember that the accessibility if it's private it can be seen only by um, it can be only seen by members of that class and so what have we done here we made these fields only accessible by members of that class, not any other class, including derived classes. So what's the solution? That's right. We need to make these, change them from pro private to protected. Okay, let's see if that's right. Woohoo! Yay, it compiles. So here we've extended it one time and so um, and, and there we go. So let's just further this example a little bit. Let's take this uh, student one and let... All right, I've coded up a simple faculty one and notice it also extends person Okay, so this is a de derived or child or 
subclass depending on how you what you want to call it what works for you okay and so notice all we do is we dis, we list the department and the is tenured as fields but yet we have access to name surname ID number email address as well as the fields from this class and then all we have to do is write getters and setters for department and tenure and and there we go let, let me show you another option uh, in regards to constructors here and the keyword um, super uh, what it does is it will call the constructor of the base class in this case the constructor is the person the person constructor and so we can pass these in and we could have it called that way if we wanted to say hey call that constructor before you do anything else at the beginning of our constructor here okay there we have just made a hierarchy with person as the base class and student and faculty inheriting um, from the person class and so we've had code reuse and there's even more benefits that we'll show as as we go on so let me give one more example here let's assume that we already have a bank account class that's already written it's working it's debugged it's it's working great but now we want to ex now we need a savings account a checking account a CD a certificate of deposit a money market an investment account uh, individual retirement account both traditional and Roth and we need to make a new class for each of these that extends um, the bank account class and so then we can put all of the complexities of bank accounts into our bank account class and we can have each of these be derived classes that are the things that are specific to it for example checking usually doesn't bear interest and allows you to write checks savings does not allow you to write checks but allows you to earn interest CDs have some extra penalties associated with them for withdrawing your money money market usually has a higher in um, interest rate and, um, and more restrictions on it investment is going to be like uh, securities uh, stocks and other things and then an, an IRA an individual retirement account is going to have more restrictions like you can't re, re uh, can't withdraw the money early and there's limits how much you can contribute and the tax benefits but each of these are accounts and so they can each gain they can uh, they can extend the bank account class to draw all of the common benefits from that there's also the advantage that we could have a collection of bank account classes and treat them in a similar matter independent of if it's a checking ac account a savings or etc for example we could have a display bank statement and treat each one of these the same we'll see more about that in the future that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it